Okay, hello. Uh, just so you know, I'm recording from two different sites at once. Uh, one is on uh, ustream.com, and or I'm sorry, ustream. TV as well. If not, um, I may have to record them separately later. But I mean, basically, what I'm going to say is about the the same. Either way, you want to look at it. So. Um, so anyway, uh, today I'm going to be talking about um, uh, uh, hold on a sec. These pop-ups and they play music half the time. Why I don't know. So if anyone knows how to fix something like that, I would really appreciate it because I really don't want these pop-ups to appear. Um, so, uh, oh, actually, I guess that's from my show page on Ustream. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, this video is kind of a response to um, to the allegations made against Dr. Wakefield. Um, <coughs> if you don't know, Dr. Wakefield is a uh, is kind of a uh, doctor who uh, he's done so he's actually had all kinds of awards and stuff I mean I encourage you to try and Google and you'll probably find a lot of uh, you know a lot of uh, issues people have about him at the same time so uh, yeah you will find that I'm willing to bet but um, but uh, you know he's actually won a lot of awards and uh, um, a lot of the controversy of him is because he's actually done a lot of uh, studies on uh, vaccines related um, um, autism and specifically most of his research has been on the MMR vaccine uh, measles mumps rubella which is interesting because I think on Good Morning America recently they I can remember what the name of the uh, vaccine that they said that people weren't getting and caused people to get sick uh, but they blamed him for which is interesting because his research wasn't the vaccine they mentioned on Good Morning America um, his is specifically measles mumps rubella um, <clears throat> so I'm kind of doing a response to this uh, to uh, to uh, you know these allegations which I will say are these are false allegations that he's done the studies he's done many other studies on this other people have taken his information you know his studies and replicated them um, and um, and they, so you know basically so basically these are false allegations um, um, but I'm not here to really I do like the guy but um, but you know here's some questions I want people to ask whether you're um, a parent you know someone considering getting the flu shot um, or uh, you know a doc especially a doctor or someone in the medical field so I have kind of some questions that I'd like to go through and ask if so uh, anyway that's what I'm doing on this video so hopefully it uh, hopefully this goes well um, and if you're on my YouTube account, I'd appreciate it if you like this video, if you think I've said some interesting things. And I'm going to leave some links in the description, but, uh, you know, please click like if you're watching my this on YouTube. That way, you know, people can find it because I think, and I'll be honest, a lot of these, some of these are kind of my questions I've asked. Some of these are, uh, you know, questions I've gotten either from reading or listening to stuff that Dr. Wakefield has said or other people have said on this issue. So here we go. Why is it if someone in the medical field starts questioning vaccines and possibly speaking out against them and placing a link between them and other things such as autism, there then the person is in the medical field is stripped is often stripped of their ability to practice medicine why it's basically so they basically lose their credentials why is that isn't science isn't the medical field supposed to be based on science and if so isn't science supposed to be based on the study of uh, the study of the world around us asking questions asking why so why is it if someone starts asking questions and you know basically asking why you know with the issue of vaccines then th you know this kind of thing happens where they're stripped um, okay here's my next question uh, why is it vaccines still contain harmful ingredients of ranging from thermosol or mercury, aluminum, laundry detergent, etc.? You know, and there's a whole list of things that you can find. You know, just type, you know, Google vaccine, it, Google um, harmful vaccine ingredients, and you'll find tons of harmful ingredients in any of them. And I. I
I'll say, you know, I'm, I'm vac vaccinated and I'm not and I'm going to say I am not anti-vaccination. Most people who don't vaccinate, it's not that they're anti-vaccination. They are against these harmful ingredients. They're like, why are they in there? There's no reason for them to be put in there. So, you know what, if they took out these harmful ingredients and all they put was like, you know, measles with, you know, a little bit of gelatin, I guess, to preserve it or something like that. I would probably, you know, take my daughter and get vaccinated, you know, I, I would love to take her and get vaccinated against measles, mumps, rubella, and all those other things, um, you know, but there's just seems to be too many risks when you look at the ingredients. These are, most of these are poison. What are they doing in there? So that's my first question. Two, or I'm sorry, three. Why is it if, if I, let's say I was a pharmaceutical company who wanted to make a blood pressure medication and to do this, I wanted to combine three blood pressure pills into one and in order to do that I'd have to get this you know this uh, pill uh, approved by the FDA so um, but they would actually throw me out for combining three medications in a one it, it wouldn't be approved yet so many of these especially the childhood vaccinations they're combining multiples into one little vaccination example of this is measles mumps rubella again so why is it vaccination companies are able to do this without any red tape from the fda or very little i should say very little if any resistance from the fda yet if i was to do the same thing with a blood pressure medication i'd be thrown out they wouldn't let me do it okay number four why is it when most people ask doctors about vaccines, they rarely give the vaccine insert unless you directly ask for it? Why is it when one typically asks doctors about them and their thoughts and feelings about them, as I have done myself, they do not give their opinion, they spout off what they read in some of their textbooks? And I'm not saying they shouldn't use these textbooks at all, but you know, do they have real life examples? Do they have anything more than just what the textbook says? Because it's a little bit different story, you know. Maybe, maybe it's like, I mean, maybe if there is in fact a link between vaccinations and autism, maybe it is, you know, very rare where this can happen. But at the same time, when it becomes your own child, this becomes more than a textbook. This becomes your own personal experience. And that's what doctors need to deal with. They're dealing with people who are personal people who, who have, you know, families and things like that. They want something, you know, other than, you know, I mean, if you're like me, you know, I've kind of read, I, I mean, I haven't read a complete medical book. I'll give you that much, but I have you know, read some of the stuff that doctors commonly say, and almost every doctor I have asked gives me their textbook response. They don't give me a personal opinion about it. They just give me their textbook information. <clears throat> Here's another question. I've lost count, so I'm thinking maybe five, but I could be wrong on the number. Why is it much more money is spent on vaccine promotion than vaccine safety and, and research? Promotion is in the range of uh, billions of dollars each year and safety is in the range of the millions. Should it not be a, the way around? In fact, most, you know, I think it's like, if I remember correctly from what Dr. Wakefield said on, on his interview with Alex Jones, it was in the 80%, I'm thinking 80, 80 somewhere in the 80% range say that you know with, with, that they they that vaccine safety research is important yet it's not being made they're spending far more money on vaccine promotion than they are in safety and research and finally this is in regards to um to uh to you know the whole vaccine link with autism why is it the parents of children with autistic kids 61% of the parents often blame some kind of vaccine. This kind of thing is often thrown out the window in the vaccine research, though. That is why, and then of this 61%, many believe that their kids were normal, that they were fine until, you know, they took them, usually from what I understand from Dr. Wakefield, it's the uh, third booster shot series or something like that where this is triggered their kid was fine healthy eight, you know maybe 18 month year old they take him to get shot and then they call my kids having seizures or something like that why and why is it autism is so much on the rise or i mean maybe it's not vaccinations that's something dr wakefield will say maybe it's not vaccinations but maybe it is so we should be looking into it and it's not being looked into autism has risen so much and not just autism other things too so you know why is it these good? so anyway these are my questions and uh, i'll leave the link to uh, dr wakefield and the vaccine safety first website where i believe you can look at 
you know, these researches that, you know, him and other people have done. So anyway, uh, that's my video for today. Uh, take care.